Welcome to The Prepared Citizen. My name is Will. If you haven't been here before, this channel is all about preparedness. And in fact, this channel is one of just a small handful that is not entirely created with AI. So if you like real people talking to you instead of random clips from the internet with an AI voiceover, this is definitely the channel for you. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about portable power stations. Are these something that you should have? What should they really be used for? And most importantly, how do you pick the right portable power station for your needs? Now, full disclosure, this power station was sent to me by Afri, Afri, however you pronounce their name. And they also sent along with this a 4,000 watt uh, solar array, which is very nice of them to do. But they know as well as you know, we do not do reviews here on this channel. This is practical information only. So we're not gonna be talking about how great this is or how terrible it is. We're just gonna show you the features and some of the things that you need to be looking for before you buy a portable power station. But before we get into the video, we have to do a little business. <laughs> we have to thank all the new members that just came over to Patreon. And I wanna give a public shout out to Peter, who just won the Core Essentials EDC belt that we just gave away over on Patreon. If you guys are interested in Patreon, go over and take a look at it. Um, next month's uh, July's uh, giveaway is actually gonna be one of these right here. A, uh, it's a Bofang UV21R, but it comes from Ready Radio, and it's gonna come to your house pre-programmed with all of your local channels, weather, emergency services, ham stations, GMRS, all that stuff uh, for you. And you can enter to win this radio over on our Patreon. As usual, hit the subscribe button, like, and comment. Let's get into talking about this Afri, Afri Air Fryer 2400 watt portable power station. Portable power stations are featured on pretty much every single preppery preparedness channel on YouTube. Most of the channels are using these uh, power stations to run a, a freezer, refrigerator, toaster, and the most bizarre, an air conditioner. I want you to go out and find me the apocalypse movie or zombie apocalypse movie where they're using something like this to run air conditioners. It's not practical in an actual shit hit the fan kind of scenario. We all know that defining SHTF or whatever is, is really difficult to do. The stuff that's going on in Los Angeles right now, uh, that is to me a shit hitting the fan kind of scenario. But we're gonna focus mostly on what you should be using these for in a complete and total grid down, uh, supply chains gone, robbers, looters everywhere, and what we're gonna be wanting to use these for. Hey everybody, um, I'm interrupting this video because I just wanted to tell you that Throughout the, the next portion of this video, every time I touched the battery bank with my hand, it interrupted my wireless microphone signal. It either caused interference or cut the microphone off completely. It only happens a few times, so the audio is going to be a little wonky, but my big question is why the hell did that happen? Can you guys tell me why touching this thing would interrupt my wireless microphone? I don't know. I'm sorry that that happened. I hope that doesn't deter you from watching. We wanna be using these portable power stations for the most simplest of tasks, but yet are also the most important of tasks. We can safely run um, indoor you know, LED lighting or external floods or spots for quite a few hours in the evening. But I think truthfully, the most important thing that we should be using these for is to charge batteries. Batteries and other electronic devices are gonna be really what separates us from the living and the non-living people in a, in a shit hit the fan scenario. We use batteries for everything and they're in everything, our phones, our vehicles. So let me just tell you some of the things you wanna be looking for when you buy one of these portable power stations. You absolutely want to have at least one, uh, what they used to call a cigarette lighter plug. It's a 12 volt plug. You wanna have at least one of those. This one happens to have two, both at a 25 amp and a 10 amp, and then it's got these 
12 volt, three amp uh, plugs right here. Those are great for running uh, trail cameras. Yeah, trust me, they're fantastic. Most of the other stuff that we can charge is either going to be USB or USB-C. And thankfully, this device has some QC 3.0s all the way up uh, to 100 watts. And I really like that. So make sure if you're going to buy one of these, you have at least one or two USB-C and one or two USB charging ports. On the back side here, we have what they're calling a pure sine wave AC output. This is super important to have. I like this one because it has multiple outlets. We have six 120 volt outlets on the back of this machine. This is gonna allow me to run some small interior lighting. I'm gonna be able to run short extension cords. Here's a little tip for you. I'm not an electrician, but a little tip for you. The longer the extension cord you use, the more power is lost at the device that you're trying to run. Would I run a, a skill saw or a table saw off of this? Absolutely not. The startup load is insane. This is only 2,400 watt. I'm pretty sure we'd trip the internal breaker. Uh, if we turn this thing around here, uh, one of the other features that I always look for in a, in a battery bank is uh, the ability to charge with both an AC input, which this one has here, we can charge AC input, or we have a DC input here for the solar panels that they sent with this, but you don't need to use their solar panels. If you have a solar array, all you need is um, whatever this connection is. Again, I'm not an electrician, I'm not too familiar with it, but does it say an XT90 input? So if you have an XT90 input, you can plug this right in and charge it. Another great feature uh, that you wanna look for is, I think it's called pass-through charging. What that means is the device can accept a, an input, a charge, and also run devices at the same time. Is it a wash? Yeah, but you know, once your device is charged and it's not calling for power anymore, then this thing will continue to charge. So I just kind of want to show you here on this one. I have looked at a lot of these, and again, like they did send me this for free, so why not take it? It saves me a little bit of money, but I like this one because not only does it show the battery charge percent, which are here it's 97%, but we also have the output wattage. I like that. I like to know how much current is being drawn out of this device. And then over here we have the time remaining. I don't know if that's actual time remaining or not. It's nice to have another feature letting me know when this thing's about to, to go out. Let's plug some things into this old girl and, and see what we can what we can get going. I have this little case right here. Um, I use this mostly for filming, but it's in usually in one of my bags in my vehicle at all times, because you guys know I'm always filming. So <laughs> inside here, I've got these super fast uh, charging cables, USB, USB-C. I've got some uh, ones with a little circuit in them or something to lower the voltage. More here. Tons of them here. I've got a few of these right angle adapters so that we can charge more things. It's just always good to have a bunch of USB-C charging cables on you at all times. So with this particular device, we actually have to push the USB button and that gets us going there. We're gonna plug in this guy. We're gonna plug in this guy. And then we're gonna go straight to the 100 watt uh, so we can charge the battery bank here. Plug that guy in. We're going to plug in our radio because, I mean, we need comms. We need communications in a, uh, you know, apocalyptic kind of thing. If you don't have a radio, if you have no way to stay in contact with everybody else, I'm going to guarantee that you're going to die. And this thing right here, this battery, this battery, this is one of those things that if you don't have the device that this is attached to, which is a drone, um, if you don't have a drone, Again, you're, you're, you're behind the eight ball already. You, you can't do any forward reconnaissance. You can't check things out. Yeah, having drones is super important, but unfortunately, I can't afford a $200,000 gas powered drone. So I have to use battery powered so we can plug that in there and we can always have our drone batteries charging. So I don't know if you guys can see the screen or not. Let me kind of zoom in a little bit here. So we're at 97%. 17 to 20. We have here 63 hours uh, remaining in, in the battery life on this device. So I have here a Craftsman uh, 20 uh, volt battery and a DeWalt 20 volt battery because truth be told, 
I don't know this machine and I'm not plugging my Festool batteries into this thing quite yet. So we'll plug him in and then we're gonna push this AC button. AC is on. That's now jumped us up to 156 watts with nine hours remaining. And I think one of the other things that we should be always concerned about is these guys right here. These double A, triple A D cell batteries. A lot of my accessories on my rifles run off of double A batteries. So I use these, these are EBL 2800 milliamp hour batteries. I love them. I put these in my trail camera uh, during deer season and they last the entire deer season through the cold and the, the warm days we've been having. And the other good thing about the EBLs is that these also have an external uh, USB port on them as well. So if you have to, you can run those. They go into the device and then we're gonna plug those in here. And we are charging. So we're running about 113, 112 watts, 12 hours remaining. And I'll tell you, I just noticed over here on my Craftsman battery, um, this battery appears to have already been charged because the green light isn't flashing. So the, I, not very accurate. Let's also talk for a minute on the weight of these machines. This one's fairly compact. It has some really robust uh, grab handles at the top, but it weighs probably 45 to 55 pounds. It's a very heavy unit. Unit? Unit. It's not something that you're gonna be able to, you know, throw in a backpack and, and take on your way, which again is why I am a big proponent of these smaller little battery banks that we can charge with this. Just in this short amount of time, the drone battery is completely charged. The DeWalt uh, battery is also completely charged. And I can tell you, I was running this battery all day today, so that's now charged. And the battery bank here is only about uh, less than half of the way charged. Between the time you last saw me and now, it's been probably 45 minutes, give or take. So it seems to be charging the battery bank a little slower than I would like it to. Um, and the radio, let's check that. Fully charged radio. So if you come take a look down here you can see that we're 37 hours remaining 93 percent and it's still pulling 19 watts which is pretty accurate because we're on the 20 watt plug there so we've done all that we've done all those tests but i had said before that really the primary use that you want to be using this for and in a you know shit hit the fan kind of thing is interior and exterior lighting. So when it gets a little darker, we're gonna run up to uh, the Hardwick Rod and Gun Club. We have a shipping container that has uh, interior LEDs, also has exterior, um, you know, like deck lighting LEDs and then some spotlights. So we're gonna run up and we're gonna test this on those LEDs. And I can tell you right now that those draw, the, especially the spotlights draw a lot of power. So we'll check this out and see if it can run you know, some lights inside that shipping container. So I just got up to the club up here. It's, uh, what time is it here? 2025. I had to do, I had to do a little bit of rewiring of my buddy Blake's uh, setup in here because I'm a moron and I forgot to bring the, the right plug. Make sure you know your plugs, ladies and gentlemen. 20 amp and 30 amp plugs are completely different. So remember that, I did not know that. So I've got the, the unit down here. Let's uh, bring you guys in here. I lost my uh, photographer. She didn't want to come up. So we've got 93, 93%, uh, 69 hours, zero watts. I'm going to go in and switch on the switch and let's see what happens. I haven't tried it yet, so hopefully I don't get electrocuted. Here we go. One, two, three. And we have lights on inside. We're running 292 watts. So you can see inside the container here, we have light. This is a pretty good uh, representation of, uh, you know, a shit hitting the fan thing. You might be living in a shipping container. And then as far as external lights go, these lights uh, he has wired. I, I don't know what I did, but anyway, these came on as well. So we've got some pretty bright uh, access lights out here to be able to work and 
Yeah, I mean, that's the purpose of this generator, right? But what if we want to run spotlights? What if that's our goal is to run bright spotlights? Well, give me two seconds to do a little wire jiggering and I will show you. Now, before you ask me, I don't know. I don't know who makes uh, these lights, but these are really bright spotlights. We've got uh, one over here and one over here. And with a little adjustment, we'll actually be able to illuminate uh, pretty much all of the, you know, whoop, a little sideways, all the shooting stuff that we have out here. So as I stand here in the super bright spotlights that Blake put in, I guess we should talk for a minute about the realities of these battery banks. I know I touched on it in the beginning, and if you're still watching, you're interested in this topic. Um, there's a lot of videos out there. There's a ton of videos, like I said in the beginning, that really focus on running your freezer, running your refrigerator. Um, that is all great. It's If that's what you want to do, who the hell am I to tell you otherwise? But here's the thing. It's not going to last you very long. And these things, these battery uh, banks, these portable battery banks, they take a long time to recharge. We're talking hours and hours to recharge, you know, plugging it into a wall outlet. If we're using solar and it's an overcast day, you're shit out of luck. You're not going to be able to charge that battery bank. And therefore, you can't power anything in your house. So really, my advice is to have one of these uh, keep it charged, use it from time to time so that you can cycle that battery out and have that for an actual, you know, shit hit the fan situation. If you're worried about, you know, hurricanes, tornadoes, uh, any type of other, you know, uh, weather event or natural disaster, your best bet, honestly, folks, is going to be a gas generator or a natural gas generator. A quick warning, um, I've seen other uh, prepper YouTube people uh, plugging their sensitive equipment into these things, like, like their computers and their televisions, I'm just going to recommend to you all that you don't do that because you do not know how clean this power is coming out. <laughs> sure, some crazy electrician with a bunch of sensors and things like that. Yep, they can absolutely measure that uh, electricity, but you and I, we can't do that. Let me know down in the comments if you own one of these portable power stations or if you have some information to share with the rest of the group. I know everybody else would appreciate it. And maybe you could help educate me a little bit on some of the inner workings, like my electrician viewers out there. Maybe you guys could let all of us know some of the inner workings of these devices. Don't forget we got Patreon and we got tons of giveaways. I have enough giveaways to get us through December and December is gonna be a good month for giveaways. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. My name is Will, this is The Prepared Citizen. And remember, the best time to prepare was yesterday. The second best time is today.